Hey guys, this is John, and I am back playing Computer Forum Possible once again on chess.com. This is another 10 minute game with a 10 second increment throughout. The computer opens with a kingside fianchetto. I'm going to play d5 followed by c6, just blunting their light square bishop. Yeah, knight f3 is the normal way to approach this position. Now bishop f5. I want to get my bishop outside the pawn chain before playing e6. I like this move order because you immediately solve that bishop problem. You are neglecting your kingside development for a moment, but it doesn't matter too much because the position is so closed. It's not like white can launch an immediate attack. So the engine's playing d3, b3. It's going to fianchetto its queenside bishop. Uh, let's play knight bd7. Actually, maybe I'll wait on that move for a moment. Sometimes I like to wait to develop this knight in hopes of playing c5 and knight c6 in the middle game. So let's actually play bishop e7. You could argue that d6 is a better square, but if you develop the bishop to d6, sometimes you have to watch out for e4, e5, forking the knight on f6 and a bishop that would be here. So the engine plays knight c3. Let's play h6. This just assures that if knight h4, I can always drop my bishop back to h7. Queen e1, common way of preparing the e4 advance. I am going to castle. I'm trying to play relatively fast at the beginning of this one because I know how uh, that time just it keeps ticking away and against these engines that move instantly you uh, you might be regretting having used time at the beginning of the game even with that 10 second increment okay so e4 I probably will not take uh, taking is fine but I think dropping the bishop back like playing bishop h7 is a bit better yes yeah, so let's do that I've had positions of this type, possibly even this exact position. Um, yeah, because if I take and they take, I think they're more likely to be able to put a rook on d1 in the future and attack my queen that might still be sitting here. Uh, they can play e5 at almost any moment if they want in an effort to uh, close down the center. a3 is strange. Maybe they want to play b4. Here I could play that c5 move I was alluding to. So let's say c5... That stops b4. If c5, e takes d5, e takes d5, knight e5, I think I can just develop knight c6. There's no problem with that. What about c5, e takes d5, e takes d5, bishop f4? Again, knight c6, knight e5, maybe knight d4 in that case. Looks all right. Because if I put the knight on d7, then they might have a better case for playing e5 because I've taken away retreat square for my kingside knight. So let's do this. The engine takes. So do I want to play knight takes or pawn takes? I was thinking pawn takes. Yeah, let's do pawn takes. Knight e5, all right. So that was the one of, one of the lines I anticipated. Rook e8 is possible to try to line up my rook with their queen along the e-file. But also knight c6, simply completing our development, looks pretty good. I don't see a direct threat that white has. d5 is attacked by their knight and their light square bishop, but it's guarded by my knight and the queen. So, hmm. I mean, maybe I should hold off on this for, for one move in favor of rook e8, because maybe knight c6, knight takes c6, b takes c6, the engine can claim a small positional advantage based on me having doubled c pawns. So I'll play rook e8. Let's do that instead. Bishop f4, okay. Uh, I could play bishop f8, maybe even bishop d6. What's going on with bishop d6? That's interesting. So bishop d6, if knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, I have bishop takes e5. And then this bishop is going to be loose on d5. So bishop d6, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes e5. Assuming they take back on e5 with their bishop, queen takes d5, wins a piece for me, clean. Of course, there's... Almost no chance the computer does that, but I'm just trying to check the tactical details. 
So bishop d6, my threat is basically at that point to uh, take on e5 and then play knight c6 and try to use that pin down the e-file. I mean, bishop f8 is my instinctive move here, just hiding the bishop next to the king and trying to operate along the e-file, but bishop d6 is more active and I would prefer that if it works. So bishop d6, bishop takes d5, that doesn't really change much though. Bishop d6, maybe knight b5. But I can take on e5, we trade knight c6, and they still have that same issue. Maybe the engine would play bishop d6, knight b5, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, knight c6, and then f4. Something along those lines. But that pin along the e-file has to be worth something. I would be kind of surprised if I didn't have some sort of opportunity there. Okay. Let's see what happens. Knight b5, as expected. Hmm. So take on e5, or play knight c6. Knight c6 is also possible. Now I think take on e5, and then knight c6. Knight bd7 is also interesting, but this, this is just so natural. Wow, okay, they take on f6. This I wasn't really worried about because I just assumed queen takes. Let me just make sure. Rook takes e1, they take on d8. I take, let's say, on a1, and then they take back with their rook. I take d8 at the end. Hmm. Because now I'm seeing if queen takes f6, maybe one issue is that the d5 pawn is under attack. So even though I'm gaining a tempo on their queen, so queen takes f6, let's say queen d2, for instance. So even though I'm gaining a tempo by attacking the queen, uh, this pawn is weak and white is threatening knight c7. So that could be the argument that the engine is making. Huh, so that's subtle. Queen takes f6, queen d2. Do I really have no way to cover both threats? I'm going to have moves like rook e d8, but still knight c7 comes. Attacking that rook and attacking the pawn. Okay, so let me consider this other move. Rook takes e1, bishop takes d8, rook takes a1, rook takes a1, rook takes d8, knight c7 maybe, knight e7. I'm holding that pawn there. That should be okay. Hmm. So this would be a bit of a change of plans if I opt to play rook takes d rook takes e1 instead, but I think it's sound. Let's do that. So they take the queen. I probably want to take a1 rather than f1. Just to force this rook to go all the way to, cor to the corner to recapture. And yeah, now let's take here at the end. So we've had some simplifications. Rook d1. Getting behind the pawn? Maybe trying to get ready for c4? Can't understand computer logic, <laughs> aka uh, no logic whatsoever, just brute force calculation. Um, king f8, king f8 would be a decent way to activate my king. I mean, if ever knight c7 or knight c3, I have this knight e7 move, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, let's get this closer. So knight e7, defend the pawn. There's also knight e4, counterattacking. But knight d4, maybe rook c1. But then knight e2 is an issue, so they can't play a capture on d5 next move. Maybe knight e4. I kind of like the look of knight d4. Knight d4, what if rook d2? 
uh, rook d2. Yeah, then I might not have time to save that that d pawn. There's some weakness of f3, but I can't exploit that. Knight d4, rook d2, rook e8, bishop takes d5, check on the back rank. Hmm. Don't think I quite have it there. There's also d4, pawn d4, but that doesn't look right. d4, there's knight a4 attacking the pawn on c5, and I can't play b6 because my knight hangs. So knight e7 or knight d4, it's a tough call. I wish I had already played the move f6 so I could play bishop to g8 if necessary to hold this pawn. I'm kind of leaning towards knight e7 right here because it's the most reliable way to defend d5. Yeah, let's do that. I couldn't quite convince myself that knight d4 was working, so here I think I have an opportunity to play f6 finally and maybe play bishop g8. Three minutes remaining for me. Computer time irrelevant because I'll always have plenty of it. <laughs> Moving instantly and gaining time each move. All right, so f4, staking out space. Maybe I can do the same g5. I feel like maybe I should play bishop g8 first. Yeah, let's do that. Stay solid. Rules out like a rookie six type move. King comes up to f2. I think my position is fine. I don't anticipate many problems in this endgame. G5, perhaps? G5, pawn takes. Which way do I recapture? Because if F takes, there's maybe rook E5. Yeah, that shouldn't bother us, though. I'm just thinking about moves like g5, because now that I've defended against the direct threats, like on d5, for instance, um, I don't want to allow him to gain space, so allow the computer to just start pushing pawns and gaining space uh, without any recourse by me. So that's why I'm thinking about g5. There's also h5 with similar plans in mind, but g5 seems to be a good move. Okay, let's do that. And it takes. So I was thinking f takes, because if h takes, then white can always play h4, and they'll have an outside rook pawn in the event of a trade. So let's take this way. King over. The king is marching to the queen side. Knight c6, or bishop f7, try to bring some of my forces up. Let's go knight c6. d5 is defended twice. Now I was thinking bishop f7. If rook f1, maybe king e7. Okay, h4. King g7, perhaps. He can't infiltrate to e7. So that's helpful. I don't want to move my knight. Like knight e4, that weakens e5. So let's come here. Pre-move this capture. Ah, knight a4. Having in mind c4, perhaps? Mm, that doesn't look too dangerous, though. All right, b6, just defend. Knight comes back. Knight d4. Knight d4, there's always that rook e5 move at the end, though. Or rook e7. I think I should play king f6 first. Uh, I have to be careful, though. King f6, rook f1, check. After a king move, rook takes f7 and bishop takes d5. Wow, sneaky. <laughs> I see your tricks, computer 4 impossible. You may have 12 minutes more than me, but I see your tricks. 
13 minutes practically. Um, a little tricky. Bishop g8. Bishop g8 looks solid. Let's do that. Just so that I can play f6 and I don't have to worry about that rook f1 idea. Whoa, b4. Pawn sec? Okay, so if take take, the rook comes into e7. That's the point. Gotcha. Hmm, maybe I should have gone rook d7 on the previous move. Probably. Okay, this is going to be tough now. Oh, what to do? Computer applying the pressure. All right, let's come here. Take knight a4 is probably coming. Yep, there it goes. Let's play c4. I don't like this turn of uh, events, though. <laughs> this has me very concerned. Rook e7, offer a trade. Rook e7, they can just take on c4. I think I kind of have to play rook c7. Hmm. Take. Okay, take back. C3. I probably want to take here now. Because d4 is coming, and that doesn't bode well for my light square bishop. All right, let's take. 30 seconds remaining. They go for a trade. Clearly, I have to take that. Now, I'm up a pawn, but d5 is under attack, so it hardly matters. Knight e7. Moreover, this pawn on d3 is a goner, so I can't even worry about defending that. Knight e7 holds that pawn, and then maybe king f7 thereafter. Let's do that. Rook d6. They want that pawn on d5. I feel like now's the time to activate my position if I'm going to do it. So maybe rook b7. Let's go rook c5, actually. I'm getting very low on time. So I have this idea in mind, is what I was thinking. Bishop f3, really? You're just going to let me take that? Okay, take that a pawn. Uh, what about knight f5, or should I just play the end game? Knight f5, rook d7, check. Okay, I'm going to play the end game. This should be a draw. I mean, my a5 pawn is pretty strong. Or my a pawn, a pawn rather. Uh, rook a1 or a5 right away? Let's go rook a1. Hmm. <laughs> Let's come over here. Hope I'm not losing that. Okay, so take c6, check. All right, I'm going to do this. Hmm. Yeah, now my idea was to get behind the pawn. So I'm going to try to give a check here. Ooh, could I be losing this though? Ouch. Uh, huh. You would think with the two pawns that this would not be a problem, but now I kind of have to take it, though, is the issue. Because rook c5 is the threat. I gotta take. Now if I play g4, the thing is, um, they can just start bringing their king back. a5 is not going to help. I gotta try to get my king around the pawn. Like so. 
Ooh, I think this is losing though. Yeah, this is definitely losing. Ouch. Mm. Yeah, they're going to play king f5 next, and then the rook is going to come back to assist. The, the a pawn barely matters. Yeah, I'll just play this out just to demonstrate, but the king is coming over. Yeah, like now king f4 gets that g pawn. Hmm. All right, I lose. Good game, Mr. Computer 4 Impossible. Mrs. Computer 4 Impossible. Gender neutral. Um, okay, so let's go back through this one. I felt like I played the first part of the game solidly. I had more trouble in that rook ending than I anticipated. So the point of uh, delaying the development of the queenside knight was to think about getting in c5. This is an idea I've used in many games. c5, knight, c6. So they took and then played knight e5. I feel like a human would be more likely to close the position and play a5, uh, e5 here for white. I had a game against um, Irina Crush in a position similar to this. So take, pawn takes, knight e5, rook e8. There was some sneaky stuff going on right around here, some tactics I had to calculate. So here I play knight c6, bishop takes f6. So if I had played queen takes f6, as was my original intention, uh, the queen is under attack, but after the queen moves, like say, I don't know if d2 or d1 is better. Um, let's say let's say d2. I don't know if knight d4 is anything. Probably not. Um, but let's say queen d2. Like now I have to guard this, and I also have to guard knight c7, forking the two rooks, because both of those are threats from white. And there's only a limited number of ways I can do that. Uh, like rook here would make sense, right? So getting out of knight c7 fork and also defend the pawn, but this still comes, and then they can double back with the knight and win that pawn. So that's one issue. Uh, let me reload this. And also, uh, queen takes f6, queen d2. If I move my queen somewhere to try to guard both of those threats, I think e5 is the only square available, but it's very easy to kick my queen away from this square where it guards d5. Like, f4 is good, and so is like a rook move. And one of these two rook moves. So I didn't like to do it, but I had to uh, switch switch course a little bit. And after bishop takes f6, take on e1. And then we have this series of exchanges. I took this rook just to force white's rook to the corner. Now rook takes here. I was a little bit worried about my pawns because they are kind of shaky, like d5, but I appear to have everything under control. Rook d1, strange looking move. Rook d1, instead of taking the open file, um, put the rook on a closed file, but maybe it helps somehow with the d-pawn later or pushing d4. Here I played knight e7. Yeah, I was debating knight d4, attacking the pawn on c2, because that has a nice trick. Like if knight d4, bishop takes, I have rook takes d5, knight takes d5, or sorry, um, if knight d4, rook c1, they would not be threatening to take on d5 because at the end of uh, that line, I would have knight e2 check. So say I played like f6 here, this would just be a massive blunder. Rook takes d5, knight takes d1, check, and go win the rook. So that wasn't possible. Um, so after king f8, rook d1, king f8, knight c3, I just played knight e7, because I wasn't sure knight d4, rook d2, whether I would have anything after that. So I just said, okay, let's play it safe, defend d5. And then rook e1, f6. It made me feel good when I can play bishop g8, and I know that this pawn will always be sufficiently defended. Um, ironically, it wasn't d5 that was the problem. It actually turned out to be c5 in the long run. Another weakness I have, but I was focused on reinforcing that d5 pawn, and when I was under a minute and the computer was making progress on the queen side, it really took advantage of the, my lack of protection for c5. King e2, I played knight c6. So it marched its king over. h4 kind of struck back on the king side. Yeah, and now this move. 
maybe right here I should play something defensive, like perhaps b6, like a prophylactic move, would come in handy, ensuring that this pawn's always defended, as opposed to playing b6 in response to knight a4. Um, it would be nice to have uh, a, a free move right here in the event of knight a4. So knight c3. Yeah, this, this was a evil little trap. So if I play king f6, looks like a good move, centralizing the king, kind of helps defend some key squares. There's rook f1 check. And then if the king moves back, let's say king here, uh, rook takes f7. King takes and then take on d5, forking the king in the knight. I'd have to give back the exchange and play the pawn down ending. That would not have been fun. <laughs> so you got to be very tactically alert against these engines because they'll just exploit any chance. And this was pretty tough because um, after they played, uh, I played bishop g8, they played b4. And I tried something to defend the seventh rank. The point is, if there's a double capture on b4, they get rook e7 in at the end. And they're going to go after a7. And then I'll be left with weak pawns on d5 and b6. So th this is a very difficult moment when the computer is changing the pawn structure and I don't have sufficient time to figure out the ramifications of that pawn structure change. So I knew this was really going to test my defensive capabilities. So we traded and the knight hops right back to that, that a4 square attacking the weak c5 pawn. This time I have no backup for it. So I had to advance it. Um, I am fortunate that if take, I can take back with check, be a discovered attack on the king. So I wouldn't just be losing the knight to bishop takes c6. I thought I did a reasonable job of defending from here. c3, I just took, I was just trying to simplify uh, and free up my remaining pieces. Now we get into rook and knight versus rook and bishop. Uh, temporarily I'm up a pawn, but it scarcely matters because as I said in the game, d3 is going to fall and d5 is also undefended right now. So I played the knight back to defend that. Rook d6, I played rook c5. Here I was expecting Rook d7, I thought the engine would play that, attack my knight and also the pawn. It must not have liked some sort of counterplay I have in this case, though. I mean, rook d7, I'd have to play king f6. Rook takes a7. What would I do then? Maybe something like knight c6 or, let's see that line, rook d7, king f6, rook takes a7. Probably move my knight somewhere. Maybe knight f5 even? Or this? Hmm. Let's say knight f5. Then I'm attacking g3 here, maybe knight e6 now, and try to come into e4. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Hard to assess this ending. Maybe black can draw. Um, so I was surprised that they did not play that. And, and instead, after... Rook c5 just took on d3, because I thought, now I get rook a5 in, and I'm holding my a7 pawn, and I'm attacking a3. So this seemed pretty reasonable to me. Bishop f3. I could perhaps play a waiting move right now. Like, maybe I should just say, hey, I've got basically a fortress at this point. Just play, like, king f7. They could play a check on h5, but I guess I just go back to uh, g7. Although then maybe they can wiggle in with rook e6 and attack that knight. I didn't feel like playing passively either here, too. I, I thought that would be a little bit cowardly. So hence, I took the pawn on a3. They took here. And now we have an, uh, a rook end game with even material. But I think I underestimated the strength of the c pawn. I thought I could always like give up my rook for that pawn and still manage a draw. Because that's kind of a common motif in rook endings. Like Even though this pawn is a runaway pawn, uh, I can use the time it takes them to advance the pawn up the board, gather the remaining pawns that white has, like that g3 pawn, and then I've always got a source of counterplay myself, even in the event that I lose the rook. But as it played out, it was instructive because that pawn became too far advanced. c6, check, here, king up. I had to get behind the pawn now. Yeah, and now after c7, I have to take it because otherwise rook c5 is coming. Like, I don't have time to do anything else. Rook c5 is going to run an interference, much like uh, the winning method in the Lucina position or the bridge position, if you guys know that one. Um, so I took, and this is instructive. I mean, this is just losing for me because my pawn is not far enough advanced. If I had the pawn on g4, king on f5, and white's rook on d4, it would be fine. 
but in this case, the issue is I can't run this pawn because they can just play like, let's say, king here. Um, and if I run it, as soon as it hits that third rank, they're going to double back with their rook. And my king is too far away to assist. If you're going to draw this type of ending with king and pawn versus a rook, you need that king and the pawn to operate as a unit rather than just running the pawn. Yeah, because here, g2, rook g3, that pawn gets rounded up. I'm busted. This a pawn is not doing anything. So that was my issue uh, right at the end of this. Just didn't have enough left, enough counterplay left to secure the draw. So I tried to get my king around the pawn in hopes of advancing it with the help of the king, but you saw how time consuming that was. And the engine just played it perfect. It didn't even take the pawn on a7 yet. That's unnecessary. It just brought the king back diagonally, ensuring that the king and the rook will assist in defending against the king and the pawn. Yeah, and this is a simple win. The G pawn is lost. So tough game. Um, I feel like I was holding holding my own against the engine for quite a while. I think I'm pretty happy with the way I played the opening and the middle game. I wish I would have anticipated knight a4 better. That was, that was a tough move to respond to. And with such limited time, um, I didn't have the, the resources on my clock to properly respond here. But I, I feel like this rook ending should be a draw. I'll have to go back and look at this a little closer, but I feel like there should be some way I can draw this rook ending. And maybe I should not even take on a3. That will be another thing I'll look at. Uh, possibly I should just wait with the king, like king f7. It's passive, but considering that I have d5 and a7 defended, my rook on a5 does a beautiful job of doing that, and it's hard for them to shift this knight. Maybe I can hold here. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I'll be back again soon trying to take revenge against the machine, computer for impossible, or possibly another engine. But since this, be, this one beat me, I am out for revenge. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.